Hey, okay, this is uh, episode two. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about epistemology, which is the study of knowledge. And uh, in epistemology, mainly, here's, here's an important question. How do you know whether anything that I'm saying is true? Well, if I'm going to try to... That was loud. If I'm going to try to prove something to you, anything, I start with some kind of reason. I give a reason, like, it's true because, and then uh, I give the reason. But uh, that reason or evidence can itself be questioned. Why is that reason true? And whatever justification we give in that case can again be questioned ad infinitum. So, someone says, such and such is true. And, uh, the, and uh, a child asks, why? And uh, the, the first person responds, well, because A is true. Why? Because B is true. Why? Because C is true. Why? Why, 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 why? Well, eventually you've got to stop. You can't keep doing that forever. It doesn't make sense. And so, you know, the, the person generally responds something along the lines of, because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. They give up just because. There's a, a ground. There's a point at which you've got to say, I can't keep questioning forever. At some point, I've just got to accept some basic facts as true. This is, is called a basic belief. Also, in some situations it gets called an axiom, or a first principle, or a foundational belief. Basically, you say, some things are just true and require no external justification. They are self-evident. That's the doctrine of foundationalism, the idea that you can't keep questioning forever. At some point, you just got to stop and accept that some things are just true. Now, a lot of people these days don't seem to realize that in all the sciences and mathematics, branches of mathematics, we start from these sort of basic beliefs. They're called axioms. And without them, you can't do, you can't do math or science. You can't have math or science without having some kind of assumption that you start from. Now, a lot of people, you know, try to have a view that has been called scientism or uh, or uh, positivism or other things of that nature. They basically say, I'm not going to believe anything except something that can that has evidence, you know. I will only believe things that have evidence, these people say. Now that doesn't make sense, because everything can't have evidence. Otherwise you couldn't have evidence. The very idea of evidence is that we're trying, we're going to connect the conclusion we've drawn with a premise which is not questioned. That is more or less the definition of evidence. Evidence would be a fact which is not questioned that establishes the conclusion that the evidence is submitted for. Unless you have something somewhere that's not questioned, you can't have evidence for anything. Now, there are a number of uh, people who come up with alternatives that try to criticize the system. One of them is infinitism basically says you know what it's okay if it goes on forever well you know what? it's not okay if it goes on forever because each statement needs just because if it goes on forever all statements are equally unjustified because you can just keep asking why and, and eventually they can't give an answer and it once you reach a point where you can't give an answer, 
and you haven't reached a basic premise or basic belief, you've shown the whole chain to be unjustified. So infinitism just doesn't make sense. Another one that more or less by definition doesn't make sense is circular reasoning, where basically eventually you come the, the chain of justifications comes back around to the original statement. We don't accept circular arguments. They are not logical proof. They are an invalid logical form. Speaking of that, of course, in logic, we have three important axioms called the fundamental laws of thought, which were described by Aristotle, though it's pretty obvious that they were in use long before Aristotle ever described them. So Aristotle did not invent the fundamental laws of thought. He only described them. And they are the law of non-contradiction, the law of identity, and the law of the excluded middle. Not only do we use these in philosophy, politics, theology, ethics, but we use them in science. In fact, the only course that I've had in college so far that actually refers to them was our circuit design course. So I, I thought that was that was kind of interesting. It's just you know they had to talk about abstract logic in order to talk about circuits, and uh, they had to. Uh, at one point, appeal to Aristotle's axioms. And uh, I'll probably do another episode just on the fundamental laws of thought. I might do one just on the law of non-contradiction, because that one is uh, probably the most significant for my own ideas. Although, some people say that each of them is contained in each of the others. I'm not sure whether I'd give them a uh, rank. I think really, they're really more like three statements of the same idea, it seems. But uh, anyway, that's getting into deep logic stuff, and I wasn't trying to go there. I was just trying to talk about justification. A statement is justified when it can be shown to be logically necessitated by a premise which is not questioned. Otherwise, nothing can be justified ever, period. Okay, that's the point that I'm making today. All right, and hopefully I'll get more into a little bit about logic and epistemology in future episodes. I've been debating with myself what order to do subjects in. I've got so many subjects. Uh, comment if you think you'd like to hear a different subject or wh what subjects are important in philosophy, which ones you'd like me to get to. Um, of course, going to be having a big discussion on the existence of God uh, before too long. Okay, well, uh, see you next time.